Good evening, uh, all the delegates and secretaries. So, at the onset, I would like to thank the chairpersons and Dr. Vansi Sabusa for giving me the opportunity. So, basically, it's being the last speaker. We have already spoke about all the FDCs. So, I'll be speaking about FDC between CETA, MET, and PIO. So, this is a case we all already uh, talked about the case. A 50 year old came to your clinic with 50 year of diabetes with acanthosis degradants, BMI of 24.4. A1C of 9.2 on <coughs> on uh, dual drug therapy. That's uh, past history of MI, stroke, and no history of heart failure. Two months post hospitalization, he visited to your clinic. So what next for your patient? So we all know that uh, India is in state of high insulin resistance. So if you look into about uh, the data from Asian India, Asian Indians, we find that. The fasting was 12.1 and must to the ISI index was 3.02, hence we are in a state of hyperinsulinemia uh, and insulin uh, resistant state. So we are genetically susceptible along with environmental factors leading us to the state of insulin resistance leading to a compensatory hyperinsulinemia, thereby it have an effect on adipose tissue, muscles and liver leading to hyperglycemia and on endothelium, platelet, kidney and neural systems leading to increased cardio renal risk in the patient. And this is a study which has been saying about safety and efficacy on viability of FDC in type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is systemic updates. So these, there are several studies which have been already done across the globe. So the, what they conclude from that, uh, they have concluded that, that there is a beneficial effect to the patient with type 2 diabetes. And the pharmacokinetic study have shown that there is this, uh, the, the bioequivalence of individual drug is as compared with the co-administration of all the drugs. So hence it's unfavorable uh, chances to add FDC to your patient. So according to the AS guideline, like if A1C is more than 7.5, already been spoken, we can start with two agents. If it's more than nine, we can go with two or three agents. If we go into our complication-centric algorithms, yes, we, saw, we see that with the agents are uh, greatly of using uh, pyoglutazones in our patients. Now, we all know about with the uh, GLP, SGLT2 and everything, we have forgotten about pyoglutazone. So let me talk about something about pyoglutazone. If you look into about the durability of pyoglutazone, so this is the data which is showing that it has been well durable. Uh, the control can be, the A1C control can be over the period of six to eight years also. Now, if you uh, talk about from proactive study, we find that there is a reduction of the time to death, MI and strokes. There is 47% reduction of recurrent stroke in our patient. There is 28% reduction of 28, uh, uh, recurrent MI in our patient. So, coming back to the triple combination of pyo, sita and metformin. In the combination, what we will find, we will find that there will be reduction of glucose. Hypoglycemia chances will be there, but it's minimal. Uh, for weight, there is, it can be equiv uh, equivocal or there can be slight chances of raising the weight. For lipid profile, it has got a beneficial role. And in case of ASCVD, yeah, there is a reduction of uh, ASCVD risk factors. But there are some precautions which need to be taken into account. So coming back to an Indian study, uh, this study, like there are a few of our DGNS members also who have done this impact study. So this was in phase three uh, multicentric randomized trial comparing between metformin 1000, citagliptin 100, and pyoglutazone 15 along versus Janumet XL50. So the primary objective was to compare the changes from the baseline uh, in A1C at 24 weeks between the fixed drugs combination versus uh, Janovia. So the second objective was to compare the change in body weight from the baseline and uh, other uh, bi biochemical parameters. So if you look into data, what they have found that from the test, they have found there is a reduction of A1C at uh, week 24, that's uh, from 9.21 to 7.5, which was p-value was significant 0.02, and hence it proves the superiority of triple drug combination. Similarly, if you look into about the fasting also, there was, it's, it's, it's been demonstrated the superiority along with PPG also. If you look into body weight, it was like uh, almost equivalent with the, both uh, the combinations. So uh, they conclude that the product FDC, the metformin 1000, citagliptin 100, and pyoglutazone 15 was found to be superior to the combination of metformin 1000 and citagliptin 100 in terms of reduction of A1C, fasting, and PPG. 
and the test product have shown good safety and tolerability profile. Since already we know that India is a state with poor compliance, like 38% of the data are saying they are poorly adherent. So hence we still have a scope of adding fixed dress combination with the advantages like uh, redu reducing the pill burden, then increasing the adherence weight, reducing, preventing polypharmacy and reduction hospitalization in our patient with some disadvantages like titration may be difficult. There might be some patients like who will be happy taking the separate medications, may not switch that. And the combination may affect the viability of the agent. So key clinical takes from this, the, my patient was of BMI 24, which is almost like uh, lean. So we can say that the patient with lean and insulin resistance uh, who are not controlled and dual therapy can be put on uh, triple combinations. The A1C was more than 9.2, so means uncontrolled diabetes. So we can should put the patient on the same triple combinations. And the patient also had a history of stroke along with prior MI. So we have seen that the pyoglitazone have a beneficial effect. So, uh, and we know that citagliptin also have a cardiovascular outcome. So we can add citagliptin, metformin, and pyoglitazone to our patients. Thank you for patience here.